Hello, so this is going to be the sixth and final presentation on uh, Adamar matrices. So we're looking to a very basic question somehow. So um, remember that the basic examples of complex Adamar matrices are the Fourier ones, right? Of cyclic group and more generally of, uh, of abelian groups. And most of the theory actually, like three quarters of what's known is, uh, is about Fourier matrices. And uh, the problem now is uh, given an arbitrary uh, Adamar matrix, can we find something like a quantum group or uh, like a quantum algebra object whose Fourier matrix is that Adamar matrix? I mean, that obviously would be very, very interesting for, uh, for many reasons. And the answer is yes, and it involves quantum permutations. And uh, there's a whole story here. I mean, it goes back to the 80s work of Popa and then Jones and many others. So it's a long, long story. So we'll get a bit into, uh, into this. So let's find this presentation first. So here we go. Adamar matrix models. So uh, why models? Because it's uh, it's related to some kind of models coming from uh, statistical mechanics in a, in a very abstract mathematical sense. Somehow this is uh, yeah, it's ideas of uh, of von Jones all this. So let's start first with the, the Fourier matrix by reviewing what we know about it. So, well, that's your matrix, right? With indices from 0 to n minus 1 as for it to be defaced. The fact that it's a Damar is clear. I mean, uh, just color products, you're computing sums of roots of unity, which are uh, progressions on the circle. So if you get the very centers of the, the polygons, it's zero always. So it's clear, I mean, no need for proof. Now, this is the Fourier matrix of the cyclic group, actually, in general, given an abelian group, so you have the group of characters, and you can talk about the Fourier matrix, which is just the, the coupling between G and G hat. And uh, well, this is Adamar always. I mean, it's not complicated. And uh, um, for a cyclic group, of course, the group dual acts by, by power of the first roots of unity. So uh, yeah, you get that formula, W to the IJ, W being the root of unity. Now, in general, uh, well, it's true also if you take a product of, uh, of groups, the Fourier matrix decomposes as a tensor product. So in particular, you see if we take a finite abelian group right, as a product of cyclic groups, we get a product of Fourier matrices. So finally, an arbitrary Fourier matrix is just a product of what we had before, of matrices like this, but with the W ranging over uh, other, uh, other roots of unity. Also, what's known about the Fourier matrix is what I was saying before. So, uh, what's written here is more or less like I don't know, three quarters. So, what's known about complex Adamar matrices? So, most of the efforts uh, focus so far on Fourier and its deformations. So, as first remark, yeah, Fourier exists at any end, so no complex Adamar conjecture, of course. There is also no circulant Adamar conjecture because this uh, cyclic roots of Bjork allow us to put a any circulant form. And there's um, many other interesting things there. For instance, this, uh, this is also Bakelin, some sort of circulant Adamar matrices. That's, uh, these are the, the basic examples. Now, geometry and defect, there's a lot of work there. So uh, what we learned uh, in lecture three, Karabegov, Nikola, Tadej, Zikowski, Baros, Sain, Benson, Tadej, and myself, and then, uh, yeah, then this uh, big result of Nikwara White. So everything is, uh, things are somehow understood now, more or less, in the neighborhood of Fn, or generally of Fg, I and mean, somehow what how the manifold looks like there. And the opposite now, so I remind you in uh, complex Adamar matrices, is about geometry, right? We have this uh, real algebraic manifold from by the Adamar matrices, and that's the very first step to understand the neighborhood of, uh, of Fn, or more generally of Fg. So after years and years, this is more or less done. Now, uh, the other problem which is somehow approachable is to understand isolated points. Isolation means always modular to equivalence relation. And here the basic examples are Fourier FP with P prime. And uh, going beyond that is a quite difficult question, but recently, uh, McNulty and Weigert came with some uh, some constructions unifying the, uh, the known examples of uh, isolated matrices, notably the tau one and many other. 
Also, there are versions of all this, like these master Adamar matrices. So, uh, yeah, many, many things concerning geometry, all that, it, it's always about Adamar matrices and their deformations and uh, Fourier matrices and deformations and versions. And finally, these analytic questions we were talking about last time, putting matrices in this stochastic form, I did some products and uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what's known so far, Fn tensor Fn can be put in this stochastic form. Uh, that it's a deformation actually. Yeah, I forgot to put a uh, stick on there. There's a parameter here, of course. And also the, the glow, I mean, this invariant somehow, which um, describes the distribution of the, um, of the excess, uh, can be computed really for, for Adamar matrices in general up to order uh, one or two, and uh, Fourier goes up to order four. So uh, once again, central objects here. Now, the question is, yeah, it would be good given an Adamar matrix to say that it's the free matrix of something. And uh, I mean, quantum algebra is just so, so big and uh, there's probably some, some kind of quantum groups there. And the answer is yes, and the appropriate quantum groups are the quantum permutation ones. And in addition, this, this makes the links with the, all this long story for Neumann algebra, subfactor, plan algebra, speed model. So it's, it's very interesting. So we're getting here into a, uh, some advanced uh, pure mathematics with, uh, with this. So let's see first quantum permutations. We need first some preliminaries on quantum groups, so it's going to be a bit long. So let's, uh, we need operator algebras. These are complex algebras with units, uh, norm, and evolution satisfies condition. It's like operators if you want to. On a Hilbert space, and actually that's the main example. Closed algebra of operators on a Hilbert space. And uh, this is actually generic. One can prove that any system algebra appears in this way. The other basic example is C of x with x compact space, the sub norm and the bar on the function's evolution. And this is for interest for us because the Gelfand theorem says the converse that the commutative sister algebras are exactly those of form C of x, x compact space. Why well, this? Well, you take the space of character and the spectrum, and then you go to some spectral theory and you prove it. So this is interest, uh, of interest for us because in general, given a sister algebra, you can always think of it as being functions of some non-commutative space. So with this in hand, let's try to find some extra axioms now on the algebras, such that X becomes some a non-commutative group. These are the so-called quantum groups. So for this, we'll first look at the classical case. So yeah, just take a compact group that's actually a group of matrices. Multiplication is the multiplication of matrices. Now let's try to express everything in terms of C of G, in terms of functions, right? Because this is a sister algebra. By Stonebarish tries this algebra is generated by the coordinates, right? They separate points. And the multiplication, you see, it goes from G, uh, sorry, uh, G cross G to G. So at the level of functions, you get something from C of G to C of G, and sort C of G. And the formula is, uh, you just take the above formula here, you have another tensor here in the middle. That's some of the, the magic of tensors, it's very simple, that's it. So finally, a G with its multiplication is perfectly described by this algebra C of G, it's just generated by coordinates, and that's the formula of the co-multiplication, if you want, on the coordinates. So all this is very nice. Now, in order to get to quantum groups, the idea is simply to take all this and remove the commutativity assumption on the algebra C of G. So here are the axioms to Voronovich. So we take uh, a sister algebra with a bionitary matrix, means that both U and D transpose are unitaries. And then this generate A such that this formula, this was exactly the formula on the previous slide, to find the morphism called commultiplication. And then two more axioms, so a group is multiplication unit and inverse, so you need also a kind of co-unit, that's a map like this, and the co-inverse, which is actually called the antipod, should be given by this formula. Right, so these are just, we saw the slide before, let's go back there. So this formula here, that's the delta, comes from the multiplication of matrices. Epsilon, yeah, is the unit, I mean, it's chronic air symbols, the unit. And S is the, exactly the, uh, taking the adjoint of the unitary matrix, that's the inverse. So in this case, 
This looks very reasonable. So uh, yeah, we can uh, say that this compact quantum group in this sense. All this is due to, to Voronovich. Uh, also due to Voronovich, the general theory. So we have a higher integration functional. These quantum groups have no point. You can we cannot really talk about measure, but we can talk about the integration because integration means any function to associate something. It's integral, and the functions we have them right. Let's look back here. We have the algebra functions. We don't have the quantum group itself. So as long as things are about quantum functions, we're just fine. So, for instance, that's the hard functional, uh, the, the invariance property of it. it. Can be shown that it exists and it's unique. We also have Peter Weil's theory, for instance, the, the algebra of functions uh, is a direct sum of uh, spaces of irreducibles. Well, the many statement here is very simplified. And finally, there is a Tanaka duality between G and this kind of category of uh, home spaces. Very good. So, uh, yeah, basically, with this definition here, have everything except for the algebra. So, I mean, there's no geometry on such objects. But for the rest, yeah, part of the wild Tanaka, everything goes fine. I can further build and, uh, the whole, whole theory developed here. Now, let's get on to permutations. So, uh, to regard the permutations as uh, we need algebraic groups everywhere. So we regard permutation group as permitting the coordinate axis in Rn, like permutation matrices, right? So these are the coefficients, of course. And uh, well, the point now, if you look at, let's look a bit at this matrix, of course, and this commutes, right? But what else can be said? They are projections because they take value zero or one, right? The coordinates. So this means it's so far, you have the potency, if you want, in an abstract sense. There are projections. And also, on each row and column, they sum up to one, right? Because you have only one, one, and the other are, are zero. So now let's call the matrix magic. If the entries are projection, summing up to one on each row and column, and let's define the universal algebra generated by the entries of a magic matrix, which no longer commutes. So this is a compact quantum group, SN plus. I mean, this algebra satisfies the axioms because if we look back, let's go back to them. We need to define delta epsilon s. So I need to map the elements of the universal magic matrix into some other things. So it's enough to prove that if u is magic, these guys form a magic matrix. That's a line computation. For epsilon is clear. I mean, the, the unit is clearly magic. And here, if you uh, Conjugate uh, if you take the adjoint of a match, magic matrix is magic too, so we're done. But the axioms are satisfied, and uh, well, there's a whole series here, and the idea is that these things really exist. So for n is two, three, you get nothing interesting. It's uh, it collapses to C of S n. This algebra, by starting from four quantum permutations, three do exist, and it's not even a finite quantum group. This algebra is uh, uh, infinite dimensional, non commutative. Or you can see that you just take magic matrices with entries in a system algebra and, and construct such things such that the entries don't commute, also generate infinite dimensional things. So it's, it's very interesting that do exist. Now, getting back to Adamar matrices, and the idea is that this magic matrix is very easy to construct from an Adamar matrix. Just take the rows and these projections, around point projections. So I divide them inside TN, which is a group. The torus, and I take the projection on one projection. So, since there are also pairwise orthogonal, these things for a magic unitary. I mean, of course, there are projections by definition. When i is fixed uh, or j is fixed, these things sum up to one. So, it's just clear. So, what we have with this magic unitary, this means we have a representation of this one algebra into M and of C, right? We map uij to these guys here. Now we can look at factorizations through, through subgroups of SM plus, SM plus quantum subgroups. We choose the minimal such subgroup for a single factorization. That's the so called Hopf image construction. I mean, just divide by some idea, not very complicated. And that's the quantum group associated to the Adamar matrix. So, again, any Adamar matrix produces a magic unitary. This is the one. So a representation, we factorize this representation and we choose the smallest thing for single factorization. So that's a quantum permutation group that we say that it's associated to the Adamar matrix. 
So a claim is that this whole girl problem. So it's somehow the quantum group is fully matrix somehow is H in a very strange sense. So first of all, yeah, for Fourier itself, you get G itself, right? So if you start with the Fourier matrix or group G, what you get is G, so that's very good. So how to prove this? Uh, well, it's elementary in the cyclic case, uh, everything is here to lunch. So uh, PI obtains the yeah, I mean, uh, you have to work out the algebra there, it's a few lines. In the general case, uh, well, it's no longer circular, but you still have a G action. So we can either repeat the proof like this, or simply use the next result, which says that tensor products go into products of groups, who is independent of this, and you get it from the structure of abelian groups. So very good, Fourier corresponds to G, that's what we need. Now this thing I was talking about, tensor products go to products, um, well, you have a diagram like this, and, uh, uh, you get your factorization. It's just uh, yeah, clear factorization through this. Now, also at the general level, the idea is that uh, the, the Tanakian category, the integration, everything can be computed in terms of the Adamar matrix. So this is a general principle, which is actually true for inner faithful models. Inner faithful means, uh, where was it? So you see this minimal factorization here, the arrow that we obtain is a matrix model for C of G. And because G was minimal, this is called inner faithful, okay? So uh, inner faithful model, here take them with a parameter. It, it's useful for, for later, things that we'll do later. Uh, can take them with a parameter and the Tanakian category, is simply the one in the model somehow in a formal sense. And also the higher integration can be constructed via a Cesar Olympics uh, from the random matrix trace. So this is just very standard things. So everything can be written in terms of H. Uh, I didn't put here the exact formulas in terms of H because they are very complicated, but this is, we just apply them to that representation. Uh, where was it over here? And uh, well, this thing gets somehow wrong, but uh, is that the general results they perfectly apply to the market case. Now, at a more advanced level, uh, so what we have is Fourier products. So, uh, products of Fourier is also Fourier. So, uh, there's a need for something here more advanced. And uh, these are the Dietz deformations. So, here's the result I take the Dietz deformation, but formal parameters now. You remember that was depending on. Um, matrix Q that I think I'm plugging in the tensor product, I take it formal. And uh, well, you can compute the quantum group and uh, there are many states made here. The final one is that the, the spectral measure of the main character, that's the univariant, becomes free Poisson or Marchi compass to if you want of parameter T, something like this. So uh, yeah, very long story here, started with Burstein, uh, student of Jones, then me and Bichon, then me and Bichon separately. So all these bees are different things. <laughs> okay. So yeah, basically for this deformation is not for generic parameters or for formal and uh, when the parameters, the these parameters are uh, not, not generic, it's a very complicated business. So uh, Bichon has done some work in, uh, uh, in that direction. So very interesting uh, subject. Now uh, for ending, uh, um, no, uh, there are also some versions, very interesting versions of this. So first is Adamar matrices of a, uh, arbitrary sister algebras, right, instead of C. So we just take uh, unitaries and the entries must, um, must commute on all rows and all columns. Okay, so that's, uh, that's an Adamar matrix of an arbitrary sister algebra A. And the point is that somehow uh, the constructions, you can still associate quantum groups by the same method. So you just need the representation of SN plus. And in the classical case, you are taking, uh, you are making the quotients, uh, HI over HJ, take projection onto that. In this setting, you don't really have this, but you can still talk about these things here after arranging in the sort of kind of quotient here, what you're doing. Right, I mean, these are unitary, so they are inverses, but they, well, that's the formula and it works. And the bit of the theory works in this, uh, this setting, so this is nice. And what it really investigates. 
the other interesting version is with partial permutations. So uh, this is uh, so the one before that's something I did a few years ago, and this is with Skolski. Uh, so uh, if you take a partial Adamar matrix, just uh, rectangular or also orthogonal, of course, you can still consider these things, but it's no longer magic, it's sub magic in the sense that entities are projections and parallel is orthogonal, I mean, the sum is no longer one. And uh, well, this corresponds to partial quantum partial permutations. So you see, with the if I remove sub here, this definition with magic was exactly the wrong algebra. If you add the sub thing, you're getting to partial permutation, which are actually semi-groups, and the construction still works. Okay, the factorization, everything. So I check this with the uh, Skalski and uh, you get uh, you get results. Now, uh, let's end with this von Neumann algebra business of factors and everything. So, uh, we need here von Neumann algebra is sort of a bit different from the sister algebras we're talking about. So, uh, these are weakly closed. And there are three theorems the commutative von Neumann algebras are an infinity of x, x being a measure of space. So, the center now is an infinity of x, and von Neumann history can uh, write the whole algebra as a uh, integral of things with trivial center and these things called factors can be actually classified in terms of uh, well their theory reduces to those the so-called type 2 1 which have infinite dimension and the trace so this is a lot of heavy work by Mari von Neumann and Itataki Saki Kwon. Now Popa looked at uh, the so-called pairs of orthogonal massa so remember yeah, the idea is always to use a algebra so Mass, I mean, maximal abelian, and Popa tried to look at pairs of maximal abelian algebras for which are orthogonal with respect to a trace. And discovered that in the simplest setting, I mean, just take the matrix algebra, the simplest form of algebra, one of your mass up to a spinning must be the diagonal matrices, and the other one, of course, must be the diagonal matrices spin by something. Well, that something which spins must be Adamar. Very simple computation. We have this orthogonal mass that's a uh, Important thinking for Neumann algebras are finally correspond to the Adamar matrices. So you can further build on this. Since you take this mass and you put them in this diagram, it's so called community square and so factor theory. And uh, by using the bone, uh, the Jones basic construction comes of a reflective thing, and you get uh, an inclusion of four factors at the end, which can be studied somehow. It's a so called Okano compactness. And, uh, well, one can prove that this factor up here is really via an action of the quantum permutation group. So all this is very related to what we were saying before. This invariance that can be recovered from the quantum groups. Everything is, uh, is like this. So now as a final question, yeah, what's the relation with, uh, with this statistical mechanical work of, of Jones somehow there? All this suggests that there should be something. And here, well, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit complicated, not done yet. The idea is that you take lattice models with spins 1n and hij somehow. The um, uh, entries of your other one should be the Boltzmann weights of the matrix. And then this quantum permutation group should compute the partition function. But uh, well, this is not done yet. There are things which are not clear because the h must be symmetric somehow for a normal model. So uh, yeah, this is not done yet, but... Uh, we hope it's going to be done soon. So this will produce really applications uh, on how to statistical mechanics. Well, so that was it. Hope that you like it. And uh, this is the end of the, the lectures on Adamars and more lectures to follow. See you soon.